Hey there, everybody. It's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video. I am doing a tribute uh, this week to the uh, great Stephen Hillenburg, who tragically passed away uh, this week. Of course, I'm going to be doing an illustration of SpongeBob. Uh, but before I get started, I wanted to sort of talk a little bit about my personal connection uh, to SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, Nickelodeon, back in the day, the magazine used to hire me to do um, illustrations, comic books, and uh, among them was this uh, uh, comic strip called Mime After Mime. They hired me not only to um, kind of come up with the comic book, but do all of the writing. Uh, and that was very unusual for me to, to, to write someone else's characters. Uh, so in a way, this was um, me, you know, inheriting these characters from Steven Hillenburg. Uh, more or less directly, the guy who created them, and, and I had the experience of, of trying to come up with a story that would uh, do justice uh, to these characters and, and sort of breathe life into them and have the kind of jokes that you would see on SpongeBob SquarePants. And, and of course, uh, learn to draw these characters. Now, I don't want to take complete credit for what you see here because I did the pencils, but I didn't do the inks. And so let's uh, quickly um, give a little shout out here to the folks who helped me out here. The inks uh, were by Jeff Albrecht, the colors by Snowcone Studios. Uh, lettering Comic Craft, which I thought was just a font, so I'm not sure if uh, they're crediting the font creator or they're crediting a, a company that laid out all the lettering, but in any case, um, I just wanted to let you know, first of all, about how, you know, when I heard the news of Steven Hillenburg having passed away, I really was uh, shocked and there, there was a kind of a personal connection having done uh, stuff like this uh, for Nickelodeon magazine. So what I'm going to do is uh, set the magazine aside and I'm going to uh, quickly ink this illustration of Spongebob uh, all in time lapse and then I'm going to come back and do a little bit of real-time coloring as I tell you more about uh, my history with Spongebob and, and what it has meant to me. Alright, so let's go ahead and start uh, coloring this in, and uh, as I said, I want to kind of take you through my uh, personal history with Spongebob. I remember when Spongebob Squarepants first came out, I think it was the year 1999, and um, you know, I was newly married, and uh, but we didn't really have kids yet. I think we had, our, our son was um, maybe just a baby at that time, and so... Um, as a result, I was not actually watching any Spongebob on TV, but I remember a friend who had kids, uh, and of course his kids were crazy about it, and he would watched a little himself, and uh, he was saying, you know, this is actually a funny show. Um, and uh, that stuck in my mind, although I just wasn't a big TV person, so I, even then I still didn't um, watch any of it. And then uh, some years later I started doing... Um, cartooning work for Nickelodeon magazine. And um, at first it was just my own strips and uh, throughout my whole time with Nickelodeon I was doing my own original comic strips, but they would periodically uh, hire me to do comic strips and illustrations that involved um, some of the Nickelodeon uh, properties. And so I uh, was first invited to do this puzzle. I'll go ahead and show it to you real quick. It um, involved the Pineapple House. Uh, and their idea was that Squidward took over the uh, Pineapple House or made his own Pineapple House that was supposed to be <laughs> amazing and it's, it's kind of gaudy with all these different things that he's added to it. And the puzzle is to find the correct order as it goes from a completely simple um, pineapple to this would probably be the next one and then the, the kids would have to go through. But the, the funny thing for me is as I worked on this I still did not know anything about uh, Spongebob. I was sort of... <laughs> I remember the guys at Nickelodeon kind of explaining to me who Squidward was and what uh, the relationship was between 
uh, Squidward and SpongeBob. Uh, so there's a certain irony in me as an illustrator being so clueless as to not really know exactly what it was. But you know, you can see that I I paid attention to the details and tried to get the um, at least the illustration work done properly. Now, uh, fast forward as my son Matthew got older, uh, and, uh, you know, by older I mean reaching the age of four or five and started watching Spongebob on TV, then I would watch it with him. And I want to show you a treasured uh, drawing that was done by Matthew uh, in response to uh, the two of us watching Spongebob together and something on Spongebob... <laughs> on the show made me laugh so hard that I was in tears. Uh, and the tears were rolling down my face and I think that really struck him, you know, at the age of whatever it was, maybe uh, six or something like that. And he made this drawing and uh, I want to show it to you now. I'm going to pull back here. Hang on a second, I'll refocus. Yeah, my son made this drawing, and you can see SpongeBob right there on top of it, and this is supposed to be me, and this is him, and he's like pat, pat, patting me on the back as I laugh, and uh, I'll just zoom in here. You can see uh, he actually drew the tears of laughter uh, rolling down my face, and um, I will reveal now what it was, because I will never forget the joke that really made me laugh that hard, and it was uh, from the episode where... Um, uh, Barnacle Boy decides to join join the dark side. Uh, some of you may be familiar with. There was one where he decided that he was going to he was done being a, a hero and he was going to join uh, the villains. And they had this organization called Evil E V I L, and I still laugh thinking about it because it's like an acronym. And they said every villain is lemons. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was so wonderfully random and ridiculous. Um, to me, sort of making fun of the, the way people bend over backwards to string together words in order to create some sort of acronym. Anyway, that at that time it had me laughing so hard there were tears rolling down my face. And so I wanted to share that drawing with you by way of um, a cherished memory and also, you know, showing how SpongeBob, this show that... Uh, some people may have thought was just for kids, really was uh, for people of all ages and had jokes in it uh, that grown-ups could understand, and some of us anyway, laughed to the point of crying. Um, but let me go ahead and show one more of the uh, Nickel Nickelodeon projects that I was hired to do. This is one of the earlier ones. Uh, it was when the movie came out, the first SpongeBob SquarePants movie, and they had uh, the Goofy Goober, the sort of uh, ice cream restaurant that they used to go to. So they had this idea of doing a, a placemat, and they hired me really to do all of it, but they, I think they especially hired me because they wanted this sort of three-dimensional looking ice cream stuff on the edge, and this spoon, you know, has the Goofy Goober character on it. Uh, you know, they wanted me to do that sort of metallic, three-dimensional look in combination with this very flat stuff, which I also did. Um, I don't think I did the text, but uh, any, any of these little flat-looking illustrations. Um, and by that point, I think I was starting to figure out what the whole SpongeBob thing was, but I was still a little bit <laughs> dim-witted. Um, but anyway, as I continued working for Nickelodeon and making those comics, I... And, and, of course, watching the uh, videos, which I would buy um, in the box set form and watch with my son and then later on with my daughter. Uh, one happy memory that I have related to SpongeBob is that um, we would go on these trips to Japan. We still do, you know, and we'd come back to uh, Michigan and be jet-lagged like crazy. You know, you're awake in the middle of the night. And... Um, so we would go to the all-night store, like a big Walmart type of store. And um, I would take Matthew over to the DVD section, and he would, he would select the SpongeBob box set that he wanted to watch, and we would 
take it home and again you know it's like three in the morning just uh, completely everyone else is asleep but we're sitting at home watching Spongebob one episode after another and uh, so certainly yeah I came to appreciate the uh, the glories of the uh, property and uh, and you know hearing this week about the passing of Steven Hillenburg was just a shock you know I, I couldn't believe 57 just way way too young and um, I guess it just made me newly aware of, of what a fan I was of his work. Um, I'll show you one more thing that I was hired to do by Nickelodeon. This uh, was supposed to be uh, Patrick Starr in sophisticated mode. So he's got the you know smoking jacket it looks like and uh, monocle. And they had him trying to talk like a fancy smart guy. Patrick Starr. Um, so, but that was another fun one to do to, to do an uh, illustration. And I thought I had one more. Maybe that's it. Uh, I do. There was one that I can't find, and I wonder if I've lost it now. But uh, those of you who had a subscription to Nickelodeon magazine, you may recall a, a special chess set that they did on you know sort of cardboard that came with one of their magazines. And uh, that was a, a big job for me, and they hired me to illustrate all the different uh, SpongeBob characters as chess pieces. And I remember, I'm, I'm trying to think who was what, but they, they had uh, different characters from SpongeBob for each one. I think Gary the Snail was the, uh, the castle or something like that. My memory's starting to fade on this, but uh, if you remember that, please let me know in the comments section because that was, I was very proud of how that one turned out. And maybe that's all I have to say really about uh, my memories of uh, SpongeBob SquarePants and the work that I got to do in connection with uh, with the show and the magazine. Let me go ahead and finish up my coloring, and I'll be back with a few final words. Well, there is my tribute to Steven Hillenburg. It really is uh, so shocking and saddening uh, that we've lost him uh, much too young, much too young. But uh, his uh, characters will live forever, I would say. People are going to be laughing at uh, the SpongeBob characters and having big old silly grins across their faces for decades uh, to come, sometimes to the point uh, of tears. I can... Uh, speak to that from personal experience. But let me go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video, and I want to thank Steven Hillenburg for creating some of the most marvelous characters the world has ever seen. And I will be back with another video real soon. <laughs>